Hello, Rock friends. Welcome to your Rock Children's Service. I'm so happy to see you on today, and I have a very special announcement. I want to see you, that's right, in person. I want to see you on August the 28th. That is a Friday. We're having our very first Back to School Jam Glow Night. That's right, and it's going to be a drive up service. So that means you get in your automobile, your adult will be driving you, okay? And you will drive up to the Rock Church, and the earlier you get here, the closer to the big screen that we will have there. And it's going to be a wonderful event where you get to see us, we'll get to see you, and there'll be lots of music, dancing, prayers for those who are going back to school, and fun, fun, fun. So what day is it again? Say it. Friday, August the 28th. I hope to see you at The Rock. See you soon. Hi, Rock friends. Are you ready to play sink or float? Sink or float? Vegetables. Let's see. I think it's going to float. And it did. Broccoli. 
float. And it floated. Carrots. I think carrots probably are going to sink. And it did sink. Charred. Sink. Oh, it floated. Corn. Float. It floated. Onions. Oh, it floated. And it floated. Potatoes. And it sinked. Beets. Sink. And it sinked. Rhubarb. Float. Float. And it floated. Yams. I think it's going to sink. And it sinked. Zucchini. Float. And it floated. And that's all. Right where you are, you ought to just begin to glorify the name of the Lord. Because the name of the Lord is a strong tower. And the righteous can run in and we are safe. So you ought to do this. Just put your hands together and bless him. 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 Put your hands together as we love.
Hey, it's time for Offering. As we give our tithes and offerings to God, let's check out this postcard we got from our friend Nathan. I thought he asked a wonderful question about why we do what we do. Do I have to give an offering? If I don't give, will God not love me as much? Hmm. Well, let's look at it this way. Mike, have you ever given a gift to someone? Yep. I gave a basketball to Luke. Did he make you give him a gift? No, I wanted to because Luke does so many nice things for me. So I wanted to give back to him. It was a way I got to say thanks. That's exactly why we give an offering to God. Not because we have to, but because we get to, to thank Him for all He has done. God is so good to us. He's given us everything we have, family, friends, the air we breathe, absolutely everything. Giving an offering is one way to say thanks for everything He's given us. And nothing you ever do or don't do will ever change how God feels about you. He loves you no matter what. Just because you give doesn't mean God loves you more. God has given us so much that we love when we have a chance to give back to Him. Thanks for your question, Nathan, and thanks for giving. Because giving is a great way to say say thanks thanks and and put put God God first. Today's lesson comes from the Bible, God's holy word. Grab your BFF. That's your Bible, friend, and finances which is your offering. Let's enjoy together. Don't forget to like the video. We worked hard on Hey, Doc, can you check if any transmissions have come in yet? On it. Nothing's come in. That's strange. The dial seems to be malfunctioning. We are Connect HQ. Every day we help the people of the world live God's way. We look for the links, make the connection, and you never know what might happen. My name is Luke, and this is the time HQ almost got an unnecessary upgrade. What's wrong? I heard yelling. Major equipment malfunction, Luke. It just fell off. I just turned the dial, and it fell off. Just calm down. We'll fix it. What about all the other things that are falling apart? Like what? Like when the computer went down last week. That's just because the cable got disconnected. Then the mailbox got jammed. And our toaster keeps burning all the toast. Oh, come on. What about the walls in the observatory? What about the walls in the observatory? I don't care for the color they were painted. I remember voting for pink. You gotta admit, Luke, we're lacking in a lot of areas here. Oh, we are not lacking. God has given us everything that we need. We are rich. How can you say that? Because God tells us so in the Bible. You know. There's a verse that I've been working on that might help you guys understand. It's from Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. Say with me like this. Philippians 4, 19. Philippians 4, 19. And this same God who takes care of me. And this same God who takes care of me. Will supply all your needs from his glorious riches. Will supply all your needs from his glorious riches. Yeah. God knows a little bit more than we do about what we need. So how about we stop focusing on what we're lacking? All right. Okay, Luke. (laughs) It's fine. (laughs) Hey, guys, it's fine. Yep, yep, got caught talking to myself again. Right this way, smile and wave. You poor people. Looks like I got here just in time. Hey, Luke, this is Smiling Wade McQuaid. Uh, safety cautious, Luke. <laughs> Smiling Wade is here to fix our problem. Oh, well, the dial is already fixed. Why did you call a repairman? 
He's not a repairman. My car. Oh. Smiling Wade McQuaid. <laughs> Lifestyle enhancement engineer. What does that mean? Equipment not making the grade. Luster starting to fade. When there's an upgrade to be made, call Smiling Wade. <laughs> uh, well, we really appreciate you coming here, Wade. Uh, but I, I just don't think we need a bunch of upgrades. Um, you know, like I was trying to explain earlier, you know, in God, we're not poor or lacking. I am rich because God gives me what I need. Now, if you'll excuse me for a little bit, I'm, I'm gonna go do some work. Of course. I guess we'll show you out. It's a real shame. It is? What is? I hate to see you poor people living like this. Why well, this place needs a complete overhaul. It does? Absolutely. For starters, you need a new sound system. I have a great Drool B17.1 surround system that you wouldn't believe. Wow. And you need to swap all this out for a voice activated, spring loaded, coin operated, Ass and Pfeffer 7000. Ooh, I don't know what that is, but ooh. What else would you change? <laughs> You know, it's been a busy morning. I deserve a snack. Great. Mess on the floor. That's a code 4293. And I can't have that. The coast is clear. No sign of Luke. <laughs> what will you do in this room? This room needs the biggest upgrade of all. Stain resistant floors, make this counter high grade, reverse osmosis, hydroponic, autocorrect, gluten free, and uh, what would you say to hover chairs? I'd say make them reclining hover chairs and you got yourself a deal. I like the way you think, kid. Oh, I'd upgrade that entire wall. With what? Tell us, tell us. I have two words for you, water, Fall. That's one word. No, not the way I say it. Water. Fall. Water. Fall. Wow. Oh! We are not putting in any waterfalls. <laughs> Luke, we were just, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm pretty sure I know what you were just, but we have everything we need right here, right now. Edges getting frayed, need new tile laid. There's always an upgrade to be made, so call Smile and Wade. I can assure you that the HQ Lounge uh, doesn't need any upgrades. Lounge? I don't like that name. Lounge? We should upgrade that too. The HQ Relaxatorium. Ooh. <laughs> well, you know, more isn't always better. You know, more technology, more stuff, more money. More money is always better. Well, God gives us everything that we need, whether it's money or anything else. You know what? There is a story with Jesus and Peter involving money that might help you understand what I'm talking about. Check it out. This is a 66 pick mixed up into one. The book's about God, who he is and what he's done. It's the Holy Bible, y'all, with God's truth packed out inside. It's alive, a prize to hide in your heart and in your mind. Old Testaments are set up for the big event. When Jesus crashed the scene with a new arrangement. It's history, his story, whose story, God's story. Let it blow up all the pages, let this show go live Let his word explode from this video into your life Papa Fish, wanna hear a joke? Sure, Charlie, what is it? Where do fish keep their money? Hmm, I don't know where In a river bank, get it? 
a riverbank? <laughs> <laughs> Good one, Charlie. You know, that joke reminds me of a day when the most unexpected thing happened. What happened? Tell me, Papa, please. It started out like any other day. I was just swimming with my guppies, swapping fish stories, having a few laughs, when suddenly we heard someone talking. <gasps> it was a human! And every fish knows humans eat guys like me for dinner. Then what? We all got quiet. We wanted to hear what the human was saying. He was talking to himself, saying something about catching a fish. Oh, oh, that's never good. Oh, no. Oh, yes. The man's name was Peter. He was talking about following a leader, some guy named Jesus. They needed money to pay a tax. I was confused. I kept thinking, you need money, you go to a bank. You don't go fishing, am I right? You're right, Papa Fish. You bet your bubbles I'm right. So I told my buddies to chill and swim low, thinking this guy will get out of our gills in no time, just as soon as he remembers to stop off at the bank. Suddenly, something caught in my throat. <gasps> I couldn't get a word out. My mouth was full, and I wasn't happy. Now, don't get me wrong. I enjoy a good snack, just like the next fish. But this was no snack. I didn't know what it was. It was hard and flat and way too big to just swallow. I was trying to spit the thing out so I could see what it was when... What happened? What happened? Suddenly, I was yanked by the mouth. It was that human, Peter, pulling me out of the water. Did you see him, Papa Fish? Did you see him? A real human? Patience, little one. Let me tell the story. Before I knew it, this Peter guy and me were face to face, nose to nose. And I'm thinking, oh no, now I'm dinner for sure. Just then, Peter grinned at me really big. I thought maybe he was trying to be friendly. So I tried to grin back, but my mouth was too full. Then Peter stuck his fingers in my mouth and pulled out money. It was a coin, a big silver one. Peter laughed and said, Jesus was right. He always is. Then he tossed me back into the water. He let me go. Woo, Papa Fish, I am so glad. You're not the only one. My friends were so excited to see me back in the water. They started to shout. I said, shh, keep it down. He's still talking. From what I could hear, it seems Jesus had told Peter to go fishing and look in the mouth of the first fish he caught. That was me and he'd find the money they needed to pay the tax. Sure enough, it happened just like Jesus said it would. I know, I know, it sounds crazy like some old fish tale, right? Trust me, no one was more surprised than I was. That's a great story, Papa Fish. Thanks, Charlie. And I learned something. Oh yeah? What did you learn? If I ever need anything, anything at all, I'm gonna ask Jesus and then do what he tells me to do. Nothing fishy about that, huh, Papa? Nothing fishy at all, little one. Now, swim along or you'll be late for school. See, God can meet any need we have without using upgrades. What do you think of that, smiling Wade? I could upgrade that tablet for you if you like. 2,000 megapixel, ergonomic design, <laughs> racing stripes. Ooh, I want a racing stripe. Well, I'll be in the hub if you need me. <laughs> it was great for us to pull our allowances like this. But will it be enough to pay for the upgrades we need? I don't know, Dot. I can't live like this anymore, Nick. I need more, more, more. I'd knock out this big window to the outside put in a huge high-definition monitor and install a camera so on the monitor you have a great view of the outside. Uh, Smiling Wade, how much will all of these upgrades cost? Oh, I don't like to talk money. So I wrote it down on this piece of paper. We don't have this kind of money. We'll never have that kind of money. Poor kids, it's a shame. Uh, can we pay you in installments? <laughs> <laughs> Smiling Wade can handle any upgrade. Uh, giving your patio extra shade, or keeping your bath towels applique, even giving Dot here a stylish new braid. But I don't lift a finger till I get paid. 
Is there anything we could do? Is there? Is there? You two ask a lot of questions. People around here should have answers. My first upgrade will be a new staff. What? Bring in some fresh people, you know, who aren't so difficult and are tall enough to reach high shelves. It shouldn't be too hard to find a new Dot and Nick? <laughs> no, that's going too far. It's too much. Don't you see, Dot? This is all too much. HQ doesn't need all these fancy upgrades. The Hassan Pepper 7000, the waterfall? Connect HQ definitely doesn't need a new dot. <laughs> Thank you for your time, Smiling Wade, but we won't be needing your upgrades after all. What are you saying? How will I put this in a way you'll understand? This has been fun, but I'm afraid. We won't be needing your silly upgrade. Time for you to go, Smiling Wade. Your loss. Give me a call if you poor people ever change your minds. We're not poor. We are rich because God gives us what we need. Luke! Where's your friend, Smiling Wade? He's out of here. Luke, you were right. Sorry we didn't listen to you before. We were foolish not to value everything we have. We thought we were poor. And you don't think that anymore? Of course not. I am rich because God gives me what I need. I am rich because God gives me what I need. Well, it sounds like you two learned a valuable lesson. A lesson that should be stored in the archives. Great idea! I'm Dot. And I'm Nick. We both learned a valuable lesson today. It's a lesson found in the book of Philippians. Philippians 419. And this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches. I love that verse because it reminds me that God knows exactly what we need and when we need it. Better than we know ourselves. He can and will meet those needs because he has more than enough. It's like the Bible story when Peter didn't have enough money to pay the temple tax. Jesus gave him what he needed. And in a really miraculous way. In a fish's mouth, the way God meets our needs is the way that's best. Even if it's an unexpected way, like finding money in a fish's mouth. When our equipment broke, we called Smilin' Wade, and he convinced us we were poor and lacking. We started to believe the lie that all the things God has given us here at Connect weren't good enough. We realize that our stuff doesn't make us rich. We are rich because we have God, who supplies all of our needs. Maybe you have moments, too, where you may think you don't have everything, but you're not poor. If you can remember this one thing, I am rich because God gives me what I need. That's it for us. And remember, Connect HQ is here to help you. I wore all of this fine jewelry because I thought more was better. But as we heard in today's lesson, more is not always the best. Let's take a read in Matthew 17, 27. You have your Bibles? Come on. That is in the New Testament, Matthew 17, 27. Miss Lanessa will read for you. But we don't want to cause trouble, so go cast a line into the lake and pull out the first fish you hook. Open its mouth and you will find a coin. Use it to pay your taxes and mine. Now you remember in the story when we heard the two fish talking about Jesus and Peter, what did we learn? We learned that Jesus knows where all the resources are. Jesus could have paid those taxes any other kind of way, but he also showed Peter and us who paid attention to that scripture that we don't have to have everything. We only need Jesus, right? We learned that he can meet our needs in unexpected ways. How many of you have found your parents have found themselves without a job or they're trying to figure out how to pay school tuition? 
Uh, what are some other things? You have an empty refrigerator. You're hungry and you're wondering how are we going to pay our bills? How are we going to pay for our school tuition? And how can you get food when you have no money and you have no place to go? Well, we learned today that God can supply all of our need. All we have to do is ask. God can provide. And not having everything you want does not make you poor. What was today's point? Let me hear you. Let me hear you. Say today's point. Yes, that is correct. I am very proud of you, Rock Friends. Listen, continue to read God's word. It is true. And it can help you in all the days to come. Miss Lanessa wants you to be a leader and to be a light in your class. Let everyone see your light so shine that men can see your good works and give God the glory. I want you to know that God takes care of all of his children. So my first question to you is, are you a child of God? And you're saying, Miss Lanessa, how would I know I am a child of God? I'm so glad you asked. Now, I'm going to give you a lot of scriptures, so I want you to listen to me. The very first scripture is one of my favorites. It's John chapter 3, verse 16. And I will recite it for you, but you can look for it in your Bible. John chapter 3, verse 16 is in the New Testament, and you can find it after Matthew Mark, Luke, and there is John. Are you ready? It reads, For God so loved the world. Well, who is the world? You're the world. And you can put your name where it says world. Ready? For God so loved. Let me hear your name. Excellent. Yes. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. And that whosoever, who is whosoever? That's you, friend. So put your name there again. Whosoever believes in him, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. You will be saved, right? And we also want you to know, we want to know why do we need to be saved? Well, the scripture reminds us in Romans 3.23 that all have sinned. Now, you know, if you were up here at the Rock Church, I would ask you, who sinned? And you would tell me, what? All have sinned. And I'll ask you, does that mean Pastor Wright? And what would you tell me? Yes, that means Pastor Wright. Does that mean Reverend Moshe, he sinned too? Yes, you are correct. What about your mama? Mm. Does your mom sin? Of course. But you know, the Bible says in Romans 3.23, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And Romans 6.23 says, for the wages of our sin, I'll say that correctly, the wages of our sin is death. What is a wage, you ask? I say, I like to say it this way, the payment for your sin is death. And it's not just physically not breathing here on earth anymore. That means to be spiritually separated from God forever. And how long is forever, Rock Friends? It's forever. It never ends. It's never ending. It's eternal. Who here wants to be separated for, from God forever? Not me, Rock Friend. You know what? God loves us, and he has a wonderful plan for our life. How can we know and experience this wonderful plan for our life if we are spiritually separated from him? Well, I am going to read for you Ephesians chapter 2, and I'll start at verses 8, and I'll go to verse 10. All right, are you ready? Thumbs up if you're ready. You ready? Okay, good. You guys are using those Bibles very well. I'm so proud of you. Moms, Please take a picture of our rock friends using their Bibles and send them in to our rock, rock page, okay? Here we go. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from, your, from yourselves. It is the gift of God. That means you didn't have to pay for it, right? Not by works. Nothing special you have to do, right? You don't have to sing in the choir. You don't have to preach. You don't even have to give uh, to the poor. It's not by your works, for it is God's handiwork. We are created in Christ Jesus to do good works, 
which God prepared in advance for us to do. Let's go to 1 John 1, 7 through 10. I know I'm going fast, but I know you guys are Bible scholars. You've been showing me that you've been reading those scriptures, and I want you to continue to do so. So here we go. It's still in the New Testament, and it's way toward the back, all right? Here we are, starting at 1 John chapter 1, starting at verse 7 and ending at verse 10. Are you ready, rock friend? Wonderful. Here we go. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. How are we purified? It's from the blood of Jesus, not our works, right? Verse 8, if we claim to be without sin, if we say, I don't sin, I never sin, I've never, ever sinned, right? We deceive ourselves. I think we just fooled ourselves, right? And the truth is not in us. What do we say if a person is not telling the truth? We say they are telling a, that's right, rock friend. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to cleanse us and forgive us of our sins. And he purifies us from all unrighteousness. Who here wants to be purified and made clean? Me, I do. What about you, rock friend? I'm so glad that God made this plan for us. And verse 10 says, if we claim we have not sinned, we make him, him is God, we make him out to be a liar. Is God a liar? Does God tell a lie? He does not tell a lie, friends. We know someone who is not right now. I'm looking at my laptop. Type in the chat, who is known as the father of lies? I'm looking, I'm looking. Oh, you're correct. You were the first one to put that there. Good job, rock friend. Listen, we know that God is not a liar. And we know that if he says that we have sinned, remember we said, this word says that all have sinned and we all have fallen short of the glory of God. None of us are perfect. perfect. So what do we say? God, I agree with you. I am a sinner, and it's my sin that separates me from you. I don't want to be separated from you, so how can I be brought back to a relationship with you? Your word in, the, in Scripture says that you'll take care of your children, and I want to become one of your children. You know what? I have something that I can share with you, and it's really simple, rock friend. It's a prayer. Would you like to pray? And you can just honestly, honestly say with your heart that you believe that you sin. Okay, I'm going to bring back the ABC. I hope you remember the ABC. Here we go. Of the glory of God. Do you agree with that? Do you agree that you have sin and it is that your sin that separates you from God? Yes? Okay, that's the first step. Step number two is B. What do we want you to be? We want you to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you know that the only person who would say that Jesus is Lord is the one that believes it? If you don't really believe that he is going to be the leader of your life and rule your life because you've surrendered it to him, then you wouldn't believe, right? So first we admit we are sinners and we admit that with our mouth. And then we believe that God, that Jesus is Lord, and then our C. What do we, what is that C? Do you all remember what C is? Oh, I can hear you. I can hear you. I'm so excited. You guys have not forgotten. C is confess. We are to confess with our mouth. That is to say with our mouth that Jesus is Lord. I think I must have skipped something, right? Commit. We're also going to commit our life. That's it, rock friends. You remembered. <laughs> We're going to commit our life to him. So it's no longer Miss Lanessa telling Miss Lanessa what to do. It is now the Lord Jesus telling Miss Lanessa what to do. And some of you are saying, well, how do you know what God's voice is saying? Well, I want you to hold up the Holy Word, the Bible. Hold it up. Let me see. I want to see it. I want to see yours too. You're still holding it down. Pick it up. Okay, good. Yes, that's God's Holy Word, the Bible. That's when you read it, you hear him speaking to you. 
And when you pray, that's you speaking back to him. So, Rock Friends, I want you to remember that you are important to God. And you, too, are rich because God knows you. Rock friends, if you made that decision, we are so excited and we're celebrating your new life. You are a brand new Christian and we are so grateful and so honored that you made that choice. Well, if you want to connect with us here at the Fountain of Praise, you can get your adult and they can go to tfop.org and there is a connect tab which will give you information about how you can become a member of the church. Uh, and there's also a tab if you want special prayer that you can click on and get special prayer. So we would love to hear from you and your adult and your parents if you made that decision. And so that's how we can connect with you. Even though we can't connect with you physically right now in service, but we can connect with you virtually. And so we just celebrate the decision that you've made. Well, Rock Friend, did you enjoy our services today? Miss Lanessa, did you enjoy the services today? I had so much fun. I had so much fun. <laughs> we know that many of you are going back to school. Some of you have already started back school, but we pray that you will be able to go back to school and the rest of the summer knowing that God loves you even though you make mistakes and that you can continue to build your confidence. Well, friends, you know how we like to close out our services. If you're not already standing, we want, want you to stand, place your finger on your forehead, and receive your blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift his countenance toward you and give you peace. See you soon.